We now have joining us on the news at this time to talk about these floods and the possible preventions and preparations. The project manager of Lekki Conservation Center, Adedamola Ogunisa. Good evening. Glad to have you on the news. Thank you for having me. Uh, so far, the floods have sent about 1.4 million people out of their homes, destroyed over 70 hectares of farmlands, and uh, uh, killed more than 500 people. What do you think the government should probably have done? Well, it's a multiple phase approach. Uh, you're looking at uh, land, proper land use planning. You're looking at an effective disaster management process. You're also looking at uh, putting conflict uh, process between the aquatic life and the human beings, because nobody is talking about that. Nobody is talking about an EPO uh, getting into homes of people and injuring them. We only thought it can only be just the flood water, but there are other issues which have to do with conflict between the aquatic life and human beings. So these are, you know, thematic areas that government should have really focused on. What do we need to do? And what will be the last long solution about this? Are we looking at uh, effective watershed management? Are we looking at effective water basin uh, management of our water basin authorities? And more importantly, what is the local participation? How do you involve local people in ensuring that they safeguard themselves? Everybody is told to leave the, uh, the flood plain. To where? How do you protect your properties? And these are issues that must be properly stated by, you know, different authorities from the uh, humanitarian ministry down to uh, local uh, each state uh, management uh, disaster management uh, agency and the local management uh, system that helps an effective and a participatory uh, flood management. Uh, procedure. Okay, let's look at the impact of the floods on agriculture and, of course, food production, which has been very, very devastating and has resulted, you know, in the loss of crops and, of course, livestock and, and other essential agricultural infrastructures. Where do you see this going? It is a huge one uh, because we are looking at most people. This is towards the tail end of uh, dry season, uh, of, of wet season for most people within the, the middle belt. And that means almost harvest time. And this is going to mean we have to really take account of these people in the first instance, be able to give them uh, a, a soft landing so that they can farm next year. That's the first thing. Second is how do we uh, uh, look at the shortage that will come out of this. So we are looking at a situation where we already have challenges about resource issues between farmers and elders, which is one of the major issues that we were thinking about. Now, the, the, the flood actually affects both the elders and the farmers this time around. So we need to take account of what could have come out of the farmlands. That will be the shortage. So we need to start looking at what measures are we looking at in the short term for the next year we must be able to take account of the farmers who have lost a lot give them buffer give them uh, a, a bit of cushioning this year so that they can prepare for next year don't forget the, the trauma itself it cannot be quantified so how do you prepare them to be able to farm for next year these are things that we need to be very strategic about but in, in, the, in, in the immediate, we need to take stock of the shortage that this flood will have caused and how to mitigate the shortage. So what's your advice, what's your advice for Nigerians as, as the flooding persists? Well, there, there, there are short times and long term. So in the, in, 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 the, in the immediate, we have to take a look at what enforcing physical land use of the flood plain. Know what should be permanent and what should be just temporary. Uh, second is the issue of dredging. 
uh, and that must be done cautiously so that the volume of water coming upstream could will be contained. Uh, the, the, the fourth one would be to start looking on the long term, and that is how do we make sure that our watershed catchment area are not eroded such that the runoff that comes will be so rapid and uncontrolled. Uh, more importantly, is also to look at what do we do with our ecological forms. And these are things that this money should have been channeled into. So I think I will look at dredging, dam, uh, watershed protection, and also to have you know, representative of disaster management at local level. I think that's what the issues are. We, we, we don't have a response, a local response, and we don't even know who is affected. The speculative figures that we are having, is it based on GIS mapping of the floodplain? Are we taking account of the people that are actually in the floodplain? So I think going forward, we need to first be able to delineate where these floods have been getting to over the last 20 years. And that helps us to take account of the various infrastructure and various resources within the floodplain. Uh, and on the long run, we must be able to provide both soft and hard engineering solution to the flooding problem. More importantly, how do we make effective use of the flood water? Don't forget, the flood water itself is a resource, but we have not used it effectively. Hence, the negative that we are coping with. And more importantly, the issue of climate change. It's real. We need to take into cognizance how we continue to empower people at local level to be able to mitigate and adapt to this effect of climate change. Thank you so much there. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Mr. Ogunche. So we really appreciate. Thank you for having me, guys. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.